Today I will speak about uh, Croc 1 uh, that happened yesterday. Uh, first of all, if you have any suggestion about a better answer, you can uh, directly me, uh, contact me in the Telegram channel uh, here in the uh, written here. And uh, I'm happy to uh, correct any questions. Uh, also check always the comments section. I will uh, add the, the link to the PDF of this uh, booklet. Uh, first uh, questions, there are repeated questions. I will go fast over them like this one. Inability to extend, extend the lower leg. This is uh, because of damage to the quadriceps and damage to the femoral nerve. Here we have typical question about atypical plasma cells. This means that we have uh, multiple myeloma or myeloma disease. Uh, third question, a person entered the room with increased levels of carbon dioxide. How will the breathing of this person change? Uh, here the, the answer can be respiration rate will increase or respiration rate and depth. For me, I found a question in a pathophysiology base, uh, the same question, and the answer was depth and rate increase. So I will go for this answer. And Mantox test, it's a test for uh, detection of immunity against tuberculosis. It's type 4, as in the base, same question. Uh, this question about typhoid fever, and they are asking us what we should do to diagnose typhoid fever if it happens uh, three days ago, what we should uh, get, what uh, method of uh, culture. So a typhoid fever, if we take the time frame for the first week, it will be blood culture will be positive, then pos late positive will be urine and uh, feces culture. So first week will be bl blood culture as here, the first three days, uh, second week stool culture, a third week urine culture. Uh, serology, uh, vital test uh, is positive, like we need some time for antibodies to form. So positive after uh, the 10th day or after two weeks approximately. In adipocytes of adipose tissue, the pentose phosphate pathway was the nature of a cycle. What is the main function of this cycle in adipose tissue? Pentose phosphate pathway. Uh, this is a pathway uh, that glucose can take. Okay, uh, glucose can, as you know, uh, break down to uh, to uh, pyruvate acetylcholine and make ATP, but it can also enter through a uh, pentose phosphate pathway to produce uh, ribose 5-phosphate or uh, and in the process NADPH will be produced. NADPH is important as antioxidant plus it helps in fat synthesis. So back to the question adipose tissue what is the pentose phosphate pathway why it's important in adipose tissue it's important because it, 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 it's important for fat synthesis and uh, because NADPH is used in the fat synthesis, okay? So it's used in the, as a cofactor for fatty acid synthase enzyme to produce fatty acids. So back to the question, pentose phosphate pathway, which is a function of this adipose tissue, its formation of NADPH2, which is a cofactor in one of the important enzymes in fatty acid synthesis. Important question it gets repeated a lot. Here we have a question, a man hospitalized with produce salivation, sweating, tears, and meiosis. These are signs of increase of parasympathetic system activity. And increased parasympathetic system activity uh, in someone who having like uh, poisoning by uh, pesticides, uh, organophosphorus compounds. These uh, compounds have a mechanism of action of anticholinesterase or anti uh, the enzyme um, inhibiting the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. This will lead to increase of acetylcholine action and uh, acetylcholine will uh, increase the parasympathetic action because it's a neurotransmitter of parasympathetic system. Here a question about a anti-tuberculosis demedication side effects and we have some neurological effects. These are side effects for isoniazide and you can see here other drugs with other side effects. Important question. For erythropoiesis or formation of red blood cells, we have the kidneys playing an important role, role by uh, producing erythropoietin. 
here a new question about someone who having problem with the interphalangeal metacarpophalangeal joints these are the small joints in the hands and they have deviation of some type like this they are deviated, they are turned to the side, and planus formation microscopically. These are all signs of rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disease that uh, affects the joints, uh, small joints, uh, interphalangeal joints, and can lead to the deviation of the fingers, like here, and planus formation, which like these bony growths. Uh, we have here a question about disturbed lipase activity. What factor activates lipase in the small intestine? I think this question is bile acids. These are a uh, component of the bile and they have um, the, the, they can activate lipases so they can break down fatty acids. We have maxillary sinusitis or inflammation of the maxillary sinus. Through what nasal passage did the function reach the sinus? So the opening of the sinus in the nasal meatus is in the middle nasal meatus. So <coughs> middle nasal meatus is the right answer. Here, uh, a repeated question from the base, vomiting, losing of acid, so we will have non-gaseous alkalosis. Uh, we have here uh, arteria sigmoida, and they are asking in its branch of which artery. Arteria sigmoida is a branch of the uh, inferior mesenteric artery. Uh, here I have a question about arrhythmia, and uh, the question here says that we have a heart rate of 200 per minute, and regular rhythm, no P wave, unchanged QRS complex, deformed T wave. So here, basically, I think that no P wave and deformed T wave means that uh, the, the, the heart rate is very, is very like uh, fast to the point that we, we can distinguish the P wave. It's merged with the T wave because uh, there is tachycardia. And this tachycardia is paroxysmal supraventricular. It's like... A, a, above the ventricle in origin and i have here like i like this diagram because it makes me it makes these questions easier that the heart rate if it's between 100 and 150 it's tachycardia 150 to 150 like in this question 200 it's paroxysmal tachycardia but paroxysmal tachycardia the type of of type of it is, is it paroxysmal ventricular or paroxysmal supraventricular it depends on the description so here the description if it's unchanged QRS complex, then it's paroxysmal uh, supraventricular. If it's the QRS complex is, is the one that is deformed, it's complex uh, paroxysmal ventricular. And it's not extrasystoles. I don't see here any uh, extra beats or ectopic beats like in other base questions. AV blocks, again, we should see like a delay. We will see in one question delay of the PR interval. So yeah, this is my opinion about this question. Next, we have chronic uh, glomerulonephritis, and that's causing uh, hypertension. What should we use as a drug? So, of course, uh, kidney disease uh, will lead to hypertension because of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Uh, this is a system that gets activated whenever we have uh, less sodium and water going to the kidney and causing uh, hypertension. So, if we want to decrease the, the blood pressure, we should stop this system by giving angiotensin covert enzyme inhibitors like lisinopril. This is a question from the base. Also this one is from the base, poisoning and then necrotic nephrosis. Uh, etiotopic drug for diphtheria to like uh, treat diphtheria and the diphtheric antitoxic serum. Diphtheria toxoid is a, a prevention vaccine but to treat acute diphtheria, we should use the serum. Uh, vitamin A deficiency impaired twilight vision. This is the type of vision that is responsible for red road cells, cone cells, responsible for color, color vision. During regular examination of a pregnant woman, we detect, uh, for the Wasserman reaction, this Wasserman reaction is the reaction we use to diagnose syphilis, and it was positive. And we need to confirm the syphilis. So we, we do basically two tests. First, we do the Wasserman reactions, complement fixation reaction. If it, and if it is positive, then we confirm the syphilis by the triponema pallidum immobilization test. So it's a confirming uh, test. Peridoxal phosphate, vitamin B6. It's responsible for transamination, decarboxylation of amino acids from the base. Sorry. 
Next, we have uh, disturbance of the cardiac rhythm and non sinus rhythm. So, in this case, uh, these are the base pacemaker cells, pacemaker cells, because they are responsible for the sinus rhythm. And if the sinus rhythm is functional, then we have a problem with the pacemaker cells. Acute pancreatitis we can reveal it by amylase. Here, a question about ionizing the radiation exposure, and then we have decrease in the granulocytes count. Um, so basically, uh, white blood cells. And what is uh, the, the reason of uh, decrease of these? I think this should be leukopoiesis inhibition or formation of white blood cells inhibition because ionizing radiation can have uh, inhibitory effect on the bone marrow. But uh, I'm not sure about this question. There are several stages in the process translation. At one of these stages, complex form that consists of ribosome, mRNA, and methionine that form. So if we speak about a ribosome, then we are already <clears throat> in the process of translation. And process translation is first is initiation and then elongation and then termination. Uh, and the first uh, the first step is of course we get the mRNA, we get the ribosome, and then we get the tRNA. And here, as in the description of this question, they get the mRNA, the ribosome, and the tRNA with the first amino acid that will form. It's like always uh, any protein we will make from the process of translation. The first amino acid that we that will form, it's methionine. It's something like always true, always methionine. And in the question, they said that methionine is the first. So it means that we are in the uh, initiation phase. Next, we have the viral DNA. We want to reveal viral DNA, so we use polymerase chain reaction. We have a purent inflammatory process. Lymph nodes became large because of this. And uh, if it's in the thigh region, so the inguinal are the regional lymph nodes for the uh, problem of the inguinal. Uh, next question I have patient died of secondary bacterial pneumonia. He has calcinosis and absence of striations. He has also uh, sclerotic changes and detected in the heart and the lungs and the liver. And they are asking us about which disease. I found this same question in the base of pathomorphology. And it's like always, uh, also we have loss of cross striations. Also we have uh, some like uh, similar uh, description as in the question here uh, they are saying about so sclerotic changes so uh, in my opinion this should be uh, dermatomyositis or inflammation of the muscles and the skin uh, because uh, as I uh, revised also a pathomorphology book the, the question um, I, I also saw that in the description of dermatomyositis, there was calcinosis, there was absence of striations of the muscles, and sclerotic changes. But the answer can be uh, different. So if you have a suggestion about other answer, and if you find something else, uh, let me know, please. Next, we have uh, autopsy of the body of the patient who died of signs of cardiopulmonary failure. We see sac protrusions, purent inflammation, myeloidosis. We have here purent sputum, cuff with purent sputum, and drumsticks fingers or clubbing of the fingers. These things happen, uh, drumstick fingers, and uh, because of cyanosis, happens in bronchic tasses, characterized by coughing with sputum, a chronic disease that because of dilatation of the bronchi, and uh, this is its description. We have a drug that blocks psychooxygenase activity. This is aspirin, as you know, inhibits cyclooxygenase. Metoprolol mechanism of action blockage of beta one in the heart. Diabetes. We have increased levels of ketone bodies. From what compounds are ketone bodies synthesized? Uh, ketone bodies are uh, when fatty acids are broken down, we, they are broken down acetyl-CoA, and then 
from there they become ketone body so the, the origin of these are acetylcholine Copper deficiency has an effect on energy metabolism in the human body. What substance becomes deficient as a result of this process? So copper is a cofactor with a cytochrome oxidase uh, enzyme. Uh, we have here a question that tells us total leukocytes is 11 and uh, neutrophils 80% and the banded neutrophils are 9%. Here the banded neutrophils, so you know the neutrophils have the mature neutrophils or segmented and they have also banned cells and also like some cells before and if uh, the banned cells or any of the immature cells here all of them are immature okay and all immature are segmented ones any increase in the immature cells okay uh, either banned or other type of cells like metamyelocytes then we call it shift to the left and the band cells they should be till six percent maximally they're like normal percentage if they are nine percent then it means we have shift to the left increase of the immature type of the cells despite profuse sweating a person feels stuffy and hot in a tropical forest at a relatively low temperature why is profuse sweating not an effective method of heat transfer in this case so here the temperature is 26 and he's in the forest and he's sweating but he still feels hot and why uh, like uh, he still feels hot my opinion because in, in tropical forest there is high humidity and humidity will reduce the sweat evaporation like he's sweating but the sweat is still on his uh, surf, uh, skin, skin surface and is not evaporating because of the high humidity that's why he's not losing any temperature and uh, other than, uh, for example, in a hot weather uh, where the evaporation happens, sweating and evaporation are important, not only sweating. Uh, if evaporation doesn't happen, then the person will still feels hot. This is my opinion. Uh, here, a person has allergic response to the penicillin and what we should prescribe him in place of penicillin. This is according to Crook Center website, should be ciprofloxacin. Uh, thermoregulatory hormone, thyroxine, circadian rhythms, day night rhythms, uh, biological uh, uh, clock, it's melatonin from penile gland. Uh, this question about hypothalamus and animals uh, we, we destroyed some nucleus of the hypothalamus of the animal, and then the animal cannot maintain their body temperature, what the nuclei were destroyed. Uh, of course, hypothalamus has many nuclei, as you can see here. Um, supraoptic, for example, secretes antidiuretic hormone, excitocine, but it's not related to the temperature. The ones related to temperature are anterior and posterior. Uh, anterior, its destruction will lead to hyperthermia because it uh, it regulates heat loss. So if it, dis if it destroyed, then there will be no heat loss. Uh, temperature will stay inside the body. Posterior hypothalamus will mediate heat uh, conservation. So uh, if it's destroyed, then we will lose heat a lot and we, that will lead to coldness. So uh, I'm not sure about what they mean maintain their body temperature. If they mean that maintain it at 37 or like the normal body temperature, then uh, posterior because it's the one related to the heat conservation. But uh, I'm not sure about this question. It can be either posterior or ventral hypothalamic nuclei because they both uh, regulate body temperature. This is from the base. Also, also this one. This one about uh, we did glucose in the patient's urine, but in the blood, the glucose levels are normal. So this means that there is a problem with the tubular reabsorption of glucose. The glucose goes to the kidney, it's normal, filtered, it's also normal. But what's not normal is it if it continues to the urine, it should be reabsorbed back to the blood, reabsorption. Okay, so if reabsorption does not happen, glucose will appear in the urine. And this is, this is called renal disorder or uh, renal diabetes, tubular reabsorption. 
and this is uh, yeah um, in a scientific experiment a structure in one of the cell components has been destroyed impairing the cell's ability to divide what structure has been destroyed the structure one of the structures responsible for the division of the cells is centrosome as you can see here it has these uh, microtubules that pull the microsomes uh, sorry the chromosomes to the pool of the cell and they are, are important for the cell division so centrosome next we have a all non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can damage the gastric mucosa to find the substances that don't cause this complication it's necessary to know what it's associated with to reduce the severity of this complication so they are referring to the damage to the gastric mucosa we need to reduce the severity of that damage to the gastric mucosa we need a, uh, to know what is the cause what is the enzyme that causes damage to the gastric mucosa so the drugs effect in a certain molecule must be re reduced okay so what they are what they mean by this question i think you know it cox we have cox1 and cox2 uh, these are the enzymes that uh, produce for us pro-inflammatory molecules like prostaglandins and so on but also produce uh, protective factors to the gastric mucosa also prostaglandins they are called uh, but uh, cox1 okay cox1 and cox2 cox1 produce for me the protective prostaglandin that protects the gastric mucosa so i don't want to inhibit that i don't want to inhibit that. this is a good cox1 i i can inhibit only cox2 to reduce the inflammation that's fine but it's uh, not good to uh, to inhibit cox1 so i need to reduce the um, to reduce the uh, inhibition or the drug effect on cyclooxygenase 1 Trisomy 18, it's Edward syndrome. Uh, the common bile duct or common hepatic duct, this is found in the hepatodudinal ligament. This is the ligament that contains the common bile duct, the portal vein, and hepatic vein. Sorry, hepatic artery. Here we have a, uh, an x-ray detects a shadow in the area of the patient's dura sinus that runs from the ethmoid bone to the internal occipital protuberance. In this case, what is this? So from the ethmoid bone, it's related approximately here to the occipital area. This is, in my opinion, the superior sagittal sinus, uh, a sinus that uh, collects vein from the upper part of the head. We have a type of inflammation of the group in the corpus pneumonia. Corpus pneumonia, it's a type of pneumonia that characterized by f formation of these films or these membranes called fibrinous inflammation. Uh, we have a uh, bacteria that cause inflammation internal organs, sepsis and blue green pus and is res resistant to most ant antibiotics. This is a dangerous bacteria called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Just memorization. Here we have uh, in news of common pneumonia diagnosed a patient. Doctor prescribed a uh, broad spectrum antibiotic resistant to beta lactamases. Inhibit peptoglycan synthesis in bacterial membrane. So, the mechanism of action of this antibiotic they are asking about its inhibition of cell wall. We have classification of antibiotics. How I uh, remember it the one that inhibits cell wall synthesis, these are beta lactams. Okay. And beta lactams can have like uh, examples such as uh, here penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams, and carbapenems. So these four can inhibit cell wall synthesis. Here we have all other options. They operate by another mechanism of action, like levofloxacin. It's a fluoroquinolone inhibit DNA synthesis. Streptomycin. It's inhibit protein synthesis, and so on. So only meropenem, which is a carb similar to carbapenem it's one of the beta lactams that is like a powerful antibiotic of course not like uh, penicillin but they are the same family uh, so it's resistant to beta lactamases so these are the enzymes that bacteria produce to uh, defend itself against usual beta lactams such as penicillin but in the end they are all inhibition of cell wall uh, antibiotics it's a new question 
impaired vision, vitamin A, vitamin retinol, pheochromocytoma, it's a tumor of the adrenal medulla that leads to increase of epinephrine. Epinephrine is this neurotransmitter that increases the blood pressure by uh, activating alpha-1 receptors on the surface for blood vessels. So to treat this, uh, this uh, activation of alpha-1 receptors will lead to vasoconstriction, increased blood pressure. So to treat this, we should give alpha blockers because the problem is a lot of epinephrine activating alpha-1. We have a child who is like tall and his uh, length is not uh, harmonious with his weight. So what endocrine gland is dysfunctional? The gland responsible for producing growth hormone and this is pituitary gland. We have methionine synthesis and uh, methionine uh, takes part in producing phosphatidylcholine and both of these substances they are present in the base they are important to remove fat from the liver and prevent fatty uh, fatty uh, fatty liver this is like an anatomy questions asking about the bones in the proximal row of the rest you can like see them they are scaphoid lunate trichoitral uh, we have an abscess in the left inguinal region and we they have a fever that reaches 38 and normalizes in the morning. So uh, for me, this is fibrous hectica. This is like fluctuation of body temperature 2 to 3 Celsius and more. Uh, so the body temperature increases and then decreases. Sepsis and wound infections are clinical examples. So here I have abscess, maybe it's like similar to what they uh, mean by wound infection. Um, it's here, maybe it's fibrous remittance, fibrous remittance, but fibrous remittance, they're saying that it's morning night temperature fluctuation is two without returning to the normal level. But here they say that it normalizes in the evening. It, it fluctuates also. Like it reaches 38, but it normalizes in the morning. Uh, so it's not fibrous remittance. Fibrous recurrence, it's uh, attacks of fever that will last for a long time. For six days, it's not uh, the question. So it's kind of similar to continue. Fibrous continue because continue also like continues for a long time. But the one that fluctuates and we, we can... Uh, uh, confuse hectica with the remittance, but remittance doesn't normalize. But uh, of course, it's not sure this answer. Hypoxemic hypoxia, it's type of hypoxia at a high altitude. A woman has congestive heart failure with increased cardiac preload. What substance will be secreted by heart in this case? So, first of all, we need to know what is preload. Preload is the amount of blood that goes back to the heart. Okay, if it increases preload, then this is there is increased uh, venous return, increased blood back to the heart. And in this case, we have the myocardial stretch, or the myocardium will stretch because of increased blood going back to it. And in case of myocardial stretch, there is a defense mechanism against a lot of blood going back to the heart because it cannot handle a lot of blood. It's secretion of antinitritic peptide, which will act in some mechanisms to decrease the total amount of fluid inside the body by increasing urination, for example, and other mechanisms. So here, antinitritic peptide, the right answer. Masticatory muscles. Uh, these muscles for chewing muscles, they are uh, innervated by the third branch of the trigeminal nerve, branch of the mandibular nerve. Uh, to uh, treat bronchospasms, we need to activate beta-2 adrenergic receptors because they do bronchodilation. This is a question from the base. To treat chlamydia-induced pneumonia, we should prescribe an antibiotic. Chlamydia is a bacteria and we prescribe antibiotics. So we treat the reason of this pneumonia. We treat, we, we treat the etiology. It's etiotropic for We have analysis of patient's ECG uh, recorded in the first, second, and third standard leads, leads that P wave is positive in each one of them. What does it indicate? So the P wave is positive means that the P wave is head uh, direction is upwards. 
this means a P wave positive. Negative means it's like this. And the direction of the wave is uh, refers to the direction of atrial uh, depolarization in the ECG. If, if the direction of the atrial depolarization in, in this direction, like in the usual cases, then uh, what, will ha what we will see in the ECG is the upward wave and so on. So the direction of the wave means the direction of the depolarization. Here we see a question about scleroderma. Uh, so maybe it makes the question before about dermatomyositis more clear because here we, we see a question how a scleroderma will look like. Uh, because in that question about dermatomyositis, uh, the, the, the answer may be confused with this one I mean. The answer may be confused with scleroderma because of sclerotic changes. Um, but here, see here the... Uh, the description of scleroderma, we have systemic disease, scleroderma, first of all, what is scleroderma? This is systemic sclerosis, there is uh, information of connective tissue uh, and uh, hardening of all tissues, this leads to the mask-like phase, this leads to, uh, because of, uh, it's basically because of uh, antibodies against collagen, and uh, yeah, as you can see here, sclerosis in systems will lead to problems like in the uh, kidney, in the lungs, uh, sclerosis in the esophagus will lead to uh, dysphagia or difficulty swelling and so on. So it's first of all systemic disease, so hardening in every area, increased density of the skin, so that the skin will be dense, will be hardened. In the dermis we see if microscopically we see the connective tissue disorganization because it's a connective tissue disease. There is antibodies against collagen, uh, gross sclerosis, nahelinosis. So. But in that question about dermatomyositis, there was lots of striations in the muscles. So there was like something about the muscles. That's why I think that question is dermatomyositis and this question is scleroderma. We have a regeneration of the epithelium and the organelles, in my opinion, should be also centrosomes because they have a regeneration function. What period of malaria plasmodium life cycle coincides with the administration of clinical symptoms of malaria in the patient? So uh, about malaria life cycle, first of all, the, the mosquito bites uh, and then the sporozoids or the uh, plasmodium form that will get inside the body, they are called sporozoids. They will multiply as a schizant in the liver and then they will leave the liver as a merozoid and then they will enter the uh, red blood cells and multiply there and then exit, uh, burst, the red blood cell will burst and the schisms will go, or they are called merozites, they will go out and then will again go inside the red blood cell. And they are asking when they, in this life cycle, we have the clinical symptoms, like uh, in one moment of the life cycle, we have the clinical symptoms of malaria, which are the fever, mainly the fever every three days. Uh, I think this answer should be when the merozytes emerge from the destroyed erythrocytes. So let's imagine here the uh, merozyte enters the red blood cell. It takes it about three days to multiply. And at the fourth day, for example, the red blood cell burst and the merozytes go out. And in this case, these high amount of merozytes which go out suddenly will activate like pro-inflammatory molecules such as cytokines, which will trigger the fever and we will have the clinical symptoms of malaria. That's why we have, it, we have them every three days. So in my case, this is when the, uh, in my opinion, when merozytes emerge from the destroyed erythrocytes. We, we have here a patient with psychosis and we prescribe pharmacotherapy. This pharmacotherapy is one of these, are only is a, uh, is a drug, uh, antipsychotic drug, it's called aminazine. Here we have also a question about parasites and they stay in a host that is facilitate their transmission to the final host. So this host is called reservier host. It's not the final host. Uh, naloxone, it's a antidote for morphine poisoning. Morphine stimulates opioid receptors. So naloxone antidote will uh, be a uh, opioid antagonist or compete for binding to opioid receptors. This question also from uh, 2020, sickle cell anemia, how it happens. Uh, it's valine become replaced with uh, glutamate. 
no sorry this uh, answer should be uh, glutamate becomes replaced with valine and that's how uh, sickle cell anemia happens amino acid replacement Next question, in the nucleus of a cell of a molecule of mature mRNA, which is smaller in size, was formed from a larger molecule of immature mRNA. This stage of trans transformation together are called. So we have a mature mRNA formed from a larger molecule of immature mRNA. Immature mRNA or pre-messenger RNA is bigger in this question because it has uh, exons and introns, as you can see here. And after processing, the introns are removed. We have only exons, and this is called the mature mRNA, the final RNA. So what, what happens here? We remove the introns, what we call this, we call it processing. Antidiarrheal drug, this is lopiramide, and also stimulates opioid receptors. Impaired water reabsorption in the kidneys. This is uh, due to uh, impaired vasopressin. It's a hormone responsible for water reabsorption. Disturbed metabolism of branch chain amino acids such as leucine, azeleucine, valine. This is maple syrup urine disease due to a deficiency of alpha keto uh, acid, uh, sorry, alpha, uh, branch chain amino acid dehydrogenase enzyme. We have enlarged skeleton, enlarged structure of the jaws and the feet and everything. This is because of increased growth hormone, another name for it, somatotropic hormone. We have, we here have a child who has uh, recurrent purulent infections, bacterial infections. And uh, we see that all the immunoglobulins are reduced, uh, IgM, IgA, and IgE. These anti uh, immunoglobulins or antibodies are produced by the B plasma cells, right? And plasma cells come from the beta cells, uh, sorry, B, B cells. And uh, this is uh, this is called immune deficiency called X linked agamma globulinemia or Bruton, Bruton disease. It's the, the primary B cell deficiency that will lead to reduced antibodies and uh, that will lead to the uh, recurrent bacterial infections. Next, we have patient died with thromboembolisms. We, we, in the cardiac tissue, we see granulomas. And that's what the most important for me because granulomas, only from the answers that can form granulomas, is a rheumatic heart disease or a rheumatic fever, rheumatism. So in, uh, based on this, I can choose rheumatism. Uh, glucagon, it's produced by alpha cells of the pancreas here we see a question they give us some uh, cell numbers and pay attention to myeloblasts 54 percent this means we have acute myeloblastic leukemia again blasts more than 20 percent it's acute leukemia the type of blasts will tell you if it is which type of leukemia is it if it's a myeloblast and it's acute myeloblastic if it's less than 20 percent blast cells and this is chronic leukemia next we have a uh, thyroid hormone they, they are produced from an amino acid this amino acid is called tyrosine sorry then we have a patient diagnosed with mitral valve stenosis what pathogenetic type of heart failure is it so uh, we have the pathogenetic type of heart failure are uh, cardiac overload, either by volume or resistance, myocardial uh, mechanism or mixed. Here we have, a, uh, if it's mitral valve stenosis, then it's a, uh, by resistance. Basically, when we have resistance to the blood flow because of the mitral valve being stenosed, then the heart uh, can fail because of increased uh, increased uh, like function like the resistant to blood flow this is here intracardiac foramen stenosis uh, any uh, foramen will lead to resistance overload 
and uh, heart failure by uh, pressure overload or resistant overload. Next, we have a appearance of large cells. These are called megaloblasts. What vitamin deficiency can lead to megaloblasts? Folic acid and cobalamin, so B9 and B12. This is folic acid B9, but also cobalamin can lead to megaloblasts. Why? Because these vitamins are involved in the DNA synthesis, and when they are de deficient, then the DNA will not be synthesized well, and the cell will stay big and not divide into two, and this will lead to the megaloblasts formation or big cells, or megaloblastic anemia as well. Here we have a patient with essential hypertension and died of acute heart myocardial infarction, so uh, an area of the heart have necrosis, and then telling us that we found in this uh, area after an autopsy after death we find an area with a transparent yellowish liquid here transparent yellowish liquid so it's transparent liquid, and with walls that are rusty. This is a description of a cyst. A cyst is a transparent fluid. Uh, activity with transparent, transparent fluid inside it and it happens after uh, ischemic uh, necrosis okay so after myocardial infarction or after a stroke in the brain uh, it happens after this so uh, that's why abscess it will be a cavity with yellowish purulent pus fluid inside it and the walls will be a uh, different color and it will be because of a bacterial infection not because of a ischemic necrosis next we have a question about here sickle cell anemia it's if we have erythrocytes or uh, hemoglobin of type h hemoglobin s we have also uh, here a question a new question about diphylobothriasis this is a parasite and it transmitted by fish and uh, it can cause iron deficiency anemia, also another crop question. Uh, we have a woman who had a difficult childbirth with hemorrhage and complaints of weakness, weight loss of 18 kilos, abscess administrations, she has memory hypoplasia and she was diagnosed with Simon's disease. Basically, Simon's disease means hypopituitarism. What is the main mechanism with the weight loss in this woman? So uh, this is uh, probably after uh, hemorrhage, uh, after a lot of hemorrhage, uh, the woman uh, during childbirth, there was decreased blood flow to the pituitary gland and what happens called pituitary necrosis, the pituitary underwent necrosis, and uh, then uh, Simon's disease happened, hypopituitarism, hypo low levels of the hormones that produced by pituitary gland like for example, um, follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, um, all of these hormones uh, that are important for the administration, for the mammary gland uh, growth. So that's why we have also for weight loss, we have the pituitary gland also organizing all of this. If the pituitary gland not functioning, then we have decreased production of adenohypophysis hormones or anterior pituitary uh, hormones and leading to all of this. We have 5-fluorouracil. 5-fluorouracil is anti-cancer drug and uh, its mechanism of action of anti-cancer is DNA synthesis inhibition. Uh, we have the epithelium is replaced with stratified squamous epithelium and this means that we have metaplasia. Metaplasia is changing of that type of the epithelium. A uh, 14-year-old patient has a positive nitrogen balance. What is the likely cause of this condition? Uh, nitrogen balance uh, refers to the amount of nitrogen. If it's positive, then we have a lot of nitrogen. Uh, that can happen in case of like increase of the diet uh, of, with proteins, also with body growth, because body growth means a lot of proteins, a lot of amino acids, and a lot of nitrogens. On the other side, negative protein balance means less protein, less nitrogen, can happen because of uh, low diet with protein like starvation, low protein diet, and so on. Uh, next, we have patient has diagnosed with chronic gastritis. Uh, we detected decreased acidity of the gastric juice. What cells can have reduced function in this case? Gastric parietal cells have a proton pump which pumps hydrogen ions. Okay, so gastric parietal cells secrete hydrogen ions. Uh, hydrogen ions 
are uh, the ions that make acidity, right? So if you decrease acidity, then it's because of gastric pyrotoxins. Gastric sheath cells produce pepsinogen, it's the enzyme. And the enzyme gets activated by hydrogen ions to pepsin to digest proteins, but it has nothing to do with the pH. It needs a lower pH, but it cannot lower the pH. It's responsible for pyrotoxins. We have elevated blood pressure due to increased vascular tone, so due to the constriction of the vessels. Again, uh, vessels have alpha-1 on top of them, so we need to block the alpha-1, and uh, thus uh, we need to block alpha-adrenergic receptors. Patient has dysfunction of the masticatory muscles caused by damage to the trigeminal motor nucleus. Again, this is like a uh, few... Of, you can see two questions about this booklet similar. Trigeminal motor nucleus, it uh, gives motor fibers to masticatory muscle, but where it's uh, located in the brainstem. In the brainstem, there is like uh, uh, midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata here. In the pons, we have the trigeminal motor nucleus. There is an unof unofficial rule, you can uh, like... Uh, Use third and fourth cranial nerves are in the midbrain, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth are in the bones, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth in the model of Lungata, like they say four, four, four. But first two are not actually in the midbrain, they are ophthalmic, uh, they are sorry, optic and uh, olfactory nerve, but you can use this as a simplification. Uh, we have on the surface of some cells, we have IgE receptors on the cell surface. Uh, what are C-cells? What cells express IgE on their surfaces? These are the mast cells. They are the cells that gets activated when the IgE on their surface cross link uh, to produce allergic response. We have a patient suffering from tuberculosis for a long time, developed bleeding from the lungs, which results in the patient's death. Autopsy detected several oval and round cavities in the lungs. So he has tuberculosis and we have oval and round cavities. The wall of cavities formed by necrotic masses. So for me, if I saw cavities, so I choose acute cavernous tuberculosis, but it can be focal tuberculosis. I'm not sure of this question. Um, in focal tuberculosis, they used to mention foci instead of cavities, but maybe it's here also focal. So for me, it's cavernous or no. Lung has giant multinucleated cells. These are the cells in the granulomas, and uh, they are also casus necrosis. These are all features of the granuloma of tuberculosis. Here we have a question. Patient diagnosed with jaundice, we see the hepatitis mag, uh, markers. Hepatitis B surface antigen is negative. Hepatitis B uh, envelope antigen is negative. Anti-hepatitis B surface antigen is positive. Anti-hepatitis B S M negative. Hepatitis C antigen is positive. So hepatitis C antigen is positive. First of all, like general rule, if it's an antigen that is positive, it means an acute infection. If it's an antibody that is positive, then it means like a history of infection in general. So if we see an antigen of hepatitis C that's positive, then it means we have hepatitis C infection, right? And I see an anti-hepatitis B surface antigen. Here, all hepatitis B markers. This, according to here, it says long-term, confirms uh, long-term immunity. So the patient had hepatitis B in the past, and now he's immune to it, but uh, he has now active hepatitis C infection. So for me, this is hepatitis C with history of hepatitis B. Uh, here we have hemorrhagic shock, and this leads to acute renal failure. Hemorrhagic shock will lead to acute uh, degrees of blood pressure, acute 
decrease of blood flow to the kidney and the kidney when there's no, no blood will lead to acute renal failure so the closest answer to this mechanism is centralization of blood circulation development of renal ischemia so they mean by that when we have hemorrhagic shock all the blood will go to the essential organs such as the heart and the brain and uh, this is called centralization the central organs and the uh, no blood will go to the kidney renal ischemia acute renal failure Here we have a question, an RH negative mother, uh, and she has a fetus who died in the uterus at seven months of pregnancy, so before birth, and we see diffuse edemas everywhere, and what form of hemolytic disease? First of all, she has hemolytic disease of the newborn. What is hemolytic disease of the newborn? It's a, a disease that happens when we have uh, incompatibility of RH blood group, that the mother have RH negative and the fetus has RH positive. RH uh, negative mother will produce antibodies against the fetus and they, this will go and attack the fetus. It has some forms, uh, some uh, idiomatous form, hemolytic, anemic form and icteric form. You can read about these forms when in the PDF, but with a form characterized by diffuse edemas, this is called idiomatous form. A uh, family of a man brought him to the doctor with complaints that he doesn't understand spoken, spoken words. Uh, he cannot read written text. So he has pro two problems. Uh, he doesn't understand spoken words and he cannot read written text. So for the... Uh, so he can speak. He can speak, but he cannot understand words. Uh, for talking, we need to understand what's uh, said to us and talk. To understand the uh, spoken words, this is the renic area. As you can see, this is superior temporal gyrus. And to speak, this is Broca's area, this is inferior frontal gyrus. So he has problem with understanding spoken words. This is superior temporal gyrus. He cannot read. This is another area, but it's close to the superior temporal gyrus. This is the angular gyrus here, angular gyrus. So uh, in this case, this is angular gyrus here. If he, he, if he cannot understand spoken words, this is the renic area, and cannot read written text, then this will be, according to the answers, the closest answer in the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus. He has a problem in the posterior part of the uh, temporal Superior pentron gyrus. Again, a question uh, similar to it impaired speech perception, so sensory aphasia, or the person cannot understand spoken words. This is superior temporal gyrus. If the person cannot speak, okay, uh, he has problem speaking, this is inferior frontal gyrus. It's called motor aphasia or Broca's area problem. Uh, increased levels of ammonium salts in the patient's urine can be associated with the development of pathological condition. What pathological condition is likely in such cases? In my opinion, uh, this is metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis refers to the high amount of hydrogen ions because of a metabolic uh, reason. And one of the mechanisms to uh, compensate high acidity in the body is to produce base. Uh, base can be produced by ammoniogenesis. It's a formation secretion of ammonia ion into the renal tubules. Uh, so uh, based on that, we have production of production of ammonium salts, and this ammonium salts, when they are, they are produced, they uh, they can uh, equalize the acid. But the answer can be also retention azotemia, which is when we have increase of the nitrogen it's basically when we have increased nitrogen also increase free ammonia but here they said ammonium salts so ammonium salts means that we are uh, combining these extra hydrogen hydrogen ions in the metabolic acidosis with free ammonium and then producing ammonium salts so we can read uh, get rid of the extra uh, hydrogen ions uh, in the urine and decrease the acid, compensate the acidity. Um, this is according to what, what they say here.
see here. But retention azotemia, this happens in uh, renal failure when we have uh, the renal is uh, the kidney is not uh, filtering uh, substances, the um, not filtering, for example, uh, urea, and urea has uh, nitrogen, nitrogen uh, and ammonia will increase. So they are close answers. But for me, because they mentioned not free ammonia, but ammonium salts, and they here say in the pathophysiology book that ammonium salts form as a re reacts action to high hydrogen ions, which is an acidosis, I choose a metabolic acidosis. Here, uh, someone after COVID, and we see that uh, there is decreased voltage of the waves, P wave is unchanged and connected to the QR is complex. The duration of PQ interval is 0 0.32. So here, here is the normal ECG. PQRS T. PQ normal duration would be 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 uh, seconds. If it's 0 0.32, then it means that PQ interval is what is uh, elongated. And as you know, PQ interval, we have P, it's reverse vertical de de depolarization. And then after that, PQ interval refers to the pause uh, period in the AV node, okay, where the AV node will hold the impulse. And this is like why we have like a isoline. And if the AV node pause is uh, a lot or we have a delay, then we, this we call it first degree atrioventricular block. It's just PQ interval elongating more than the uh, normal. Uh, if, if, it, uh, if it is PQ interval elongating with QRS complex drop, but here we don't have any QRS complex dropping, they said no in the question, it's second degree. If the P and the QRS complex are completely disassociated, this third degree. In human body, reserves of hydrocarbons are, uh, are localized mainly in the liver and skeletal muscles, which reserve becomes mobilized to maintain blood glucose levels during fasting. So we have the, of course, hepatic reserves of glycogen. They have uh, a lot of glycogen, and they, in, during fasting, uh, break down the glucose, and this glucose will support the glucose levels during fasting or periods of not eating. Vitamin D deficiency is important. Vitamin D is important for the growth of the bones in adults to produce osteoporosis in children to produce rickets. When pressure in the aorta sharply increases, uh, the force and rate of cardiac contractions decrease. What uh, nerve sensitive fibers from the bladder sectors of the when they says the fires of the barrel receptors with the aortic arc. So here should be the answer, sorry, vagus nerve. Uh, barrel receptors, first of all, these are the receptors that sense the blood pressure changes and the blood pressure increases, then the uh, these barrel receptors get activated to tell, to tell the brain that we need to lower uh, or uh, lower the blood pressure. And uh, barrel receptors in the aorta are give uh, information to the brain by the vagus nerve. Uh, Barrow receptors on the carotid, uh, on the, uh, carotid artery, they give information to the brain by glossopharyngeal nerve. So here they are still against the aorta, so here it's vagus nerve. Here we have a question, a patient with pulmonary fibrosis presented with decreased pulmonary ventilation. Uh, what parameter of external respiration would change this patient? So uh, this, I think it's uh, repeated in the base, but anyway, pulmonary fibrosis uh, will lead to the vital capacity of the lungs will decrease. So the, the maximum amount of air that the, the lung can exhale and inhale will decrease in general because fibrosis will limit the lung ability to expand and this leads to that the lung uh, deals with less air in general. Hemophilia B uh, leads to, or it's because of deficiency of factor number nine. Uh, here we have a diarrhea and uh, inflammation that happens in the rectum or in the large intestine. 
um, shingle losses or dysentery. It's inflammation of the large intestine and it's characterized always by called uh, this one is a diphtheric inflammation. Filmy deposits tightly attached to the underlying tissue type of inflammation. Sometimes they bring the question, the same question, but they tell you what type of inflammation is it. It's dysentery and the type of it is diphtheric inflammation. You can say if it's if they, if it causes uh, membranes which are tightly adhering to the tissue. If, if they are membranes or films or uh, yeah uh, that are not tightly adhering, then they are fibrinous inflammation. Here we have a rupture of the median nerve and causes unbearable pain. This is causalgic pain. The pain that happens when you have damage to the nerves. We have hyperaldosteronism, which is like a, a lot of aldosterone hormone because of some, uh, maybe some tumor. To, to the, the drug that we recommend in this case is spironolactone because spironolactone is an antagonist of aldosterone hormone. It will block aldosterone uh, receptors. So it's like the opposite mechanism can work in this case. Here we have von Gerg disease and we see reduced glucose levels in the blood um, and slow growth and so on. So von Gerg disease is one of the gly glycogen problem disease or glycogen storage diseases in which the glycogen that we have, we cannot break it down to glucose. It stays like complex uh, glycogen. And the problem is in the last step, the glucose 6-phosphate break down to glucose because of deficiency of glucose 6-phosphate. And this will lead to low glu glu glucose in the general because glucose 6-phosphate, we cannot use it for the glycolysis. Hyperchromic anemia, uh, again, after gastric resection, resection, we have hyperchromic anemia, refers to the anemia that have intensive uh, hemoglobin. And this is because of, again, the megaloblasts not being able to divide. And this is because uh, hyperchromic megaloblastic anemia is because of vitamin B12 deficiency or cyanocobalamin deficiency. Uh, it's related to gastric uh, resection or, or removing of the stomach because the stomach, as you know, produces the intrinsic factor. And uh, if you remove the stomach, intrinsic factor will not be there. Intrinsic factor is, is important for absorption of B12. Hydrocele refers to the accumulation of fluid between the, in the tunica vaginalis. And tunica vaginalis is a membrane that have a visceral layer and parietal layer, and this is where the fluid will accumulate. Examination detects a dysfunction of the nodes in the patient's cardiac conduction system. In this case, blood circulation have occurred on the basis of the following artery. Uh, so dysfunction of the nodes in the heart, in like atrioventricular node and sinoatrial node. Uh, according to this picture, the Sinoatrial node and atrioventricular node are supplied by the right coronary artery. We have again lung hand cell, epithelial cell, these are the cells of granulomatous inflammation. Pepsin is an enzyme of gastric juice that's secreted in its inactive form of. Of trypsinogen, what is the mechanism of its activation? All of these enzymes, trypsinogen to trypsin, chemotrypsinogen to chemotrypsin in the small intestine, pepsinogen to pepsin, all of these enzymes, the way that they are uh, convert to their active forms is by limited proteolysis. That a part of the of the protein enzyme will get cleaved, and we get the active enzyme. Type one diabetes. Um, it's an autoimmune in origin that we have autoimmune antibodies that will damage the beta cells that will lead to absolute deficiency of insulin. These molecules actually in the pituitary gland, or these hormones are from a common precursor called pro-opium melanocortin. Cytochrome oxidase blockage will lead to tissue hypoxia. Cytochrome oxidase is a one of the last enzymes in the mitochondrial respiratory chain, 
which is responsible for using oxygen to produce ATP. So if we even if we have oxygen, there is no problem in the atmosphere and the blood, etc. But we cannot use this oxygen because there is a problem with this enzyme to produce ATP, then this we call it tissue hypoxia. Yes, and I think this is the most important questions. If you have any suggestions, uh, if you like uh, find a mistake, uh, feel free to contact me and I will uh, note it in the Telegram channel. Uh, channel.